Okay, there's going to be a recap of AEW Dynamite for April of 2021. Going to start with the top five matches of the month. That number one, excellent match, probably the best Dynamite match of the year. In my opinion, we have the Young Bucks taking on Pac and Ray Phoenix from April 14th. Uh, this match is a long time in the making. You know, they, they have been building this up ever since Revolution, where Pac and Ray Phoenix won the uh, Casino Battle Royale. So... Oh, we finally got the seed here in the Young Bucks. They turned heel the previous week. They uh, sided with Kenny Omega and uh, Don Callis. But uh, back to this match right here, man. This The, the match is incredible. You know, uh, Jim Ross was actually talking about on commentary that Pac reminds him of a younger uh, Dynamite kid. And I never thought of it before, but uh, I think that's definitely a good comparison, you know, because they're both shorter, but they're strong and, you know, just very well built. And Ray Phoenix was uh, incredible here. Just tremendous sequences here. We've seen Ray Phoenix work with the Bucks a million times, but, you know, this was just another uh, you know, excellent tag match from the Bucks. Uh, Matt Jackson was basically like mocking the, uh, you know, the the older Young Bucks. You know, they, they were definitely, this was definitely a change of direction for them. So they were kind of mocking a lot of the sucking up to the crowd that they used to do. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, the probably the highlight of the match here, there was a, a double reverse Rana on the, uh, on the outside. Yeah, I think Nick Jackson did one and then Ray Phoenix did one. And then uh, Ray Phoenix actually no sells a super kick, goes into the barricade, and then all of a sudden Phoenix does a ace crusher after no selling the super kick. So I thought that was really cool. That was an awesome spot. Uh, you know, the, the Young Bucks actually take off Ray Phoenix's uh, mask, do a double super kick to get the victory there. So, you know, nothing more heelish than that. This It, it was a good match because it really set the tone for this uh, Young Bucks heel turn. So, yeah, the the, ma the match was excellent. Uh, I just wish it had, you know, more of a crowd to feed off of because th this could have been uh, incredible uh, in front of, you know, an authentic AEW crowd. But, yeah, definitely the best match of the month. The only match on this list I would, you know, run out of your way to see. So that's Young Bucks versus uh, Pac and Ray Phoenix. You saw the change of direction uh, with the Bucks in this match. Uh, changed their attire. You know, Christopher Daniels was you know, and uh, Frankie Kazarian goofing on the ring attire a couple weeks later. But, yeah, that's definitely the uh, the match of the month. So at number two, let's jump right to number two. I'm going to go with Darby Allen taking on Matt Hardy, uh, the main event from the same night from April 14th. This was a uh, Falls Cat Anywhere match. It was crazy. I, I would definitely say this is the best match that Matt Hardy had since he's been in AEW. They, You know, this was one of those matches that went all over the place. They actually went backstage uh, they, they were, finally got to see BJ Whitmer, uh, live on TV, but yeah, I mean, it just had a crazy ending. The, um, the coffin drop onto the announce table off the Titan Tron. That was a, you know, awesome way to end the match. So congratulations to Darby Allen. How many main events has Darby Allen had this whole month? It seems like he's main eventing every single dynamite. I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, you could close the show with Sting being the enforcer. That has a lot to do with it. But, yeah, man, give, give credit to Darby and Matt Hardy. Uh, definitely the best match I've seen Matt Hardy have. And, you know, Matt pulled out some cool things, too. The, uh, you know, the, the leg drop through the table. You know, he got pretty crazy there. So uh, definitely check it out. I wasn't expecting much from it, but, yeah, it was pretty cool. The Falls Count Anywhere match. At number three, I'm going to go with Jungle Boy. Versus Darby Allen once again, another main event from April 21st. I uh, love this combination. You could definitely go back to it down the road. Um, I'll say this about Jungle Boy. I'm, I'm a big fan. You know, part of it has to do with his dad, too. You know, like I, when I was growing up in elementary school, I, I would definitely say uh, Luke Perry, his father, was on a show called Beverly Hills 90210. And him and Shannon Doherty, who was known as Brenda, Brenda and Dylan, that was the couple. They were like the hottest couple on tv at the time you know beverly hills 90210 it was like one of those soap opera shows but you know bottom line is you know uh, luke perry jungle boy's father was at one point he was like you know one of the most popular uh television stars uh in america and it, uh, for some reason if if it definitely gets forgotten about i mean rest in peace to his dad if you if you didn't know his dad was actually in uh once upon a time in hollywood but yeah back to the match man i mean these two guys if you could ignore all the interference thing being the enforcer all that stuff i thought it was an excellent match between these two guys uh darby actually pulled off looked like he was doing like a lasso from el paso uh submission or you know a reverse lasso from el paso but he actually you know used it pulled back on it and 
been Jungle Boy. So I thought the, the, the finish was good. I thought the chemistry was good. Very athletic. Very refreshing main event. It's, it's, it's an ideal main event between two young up-and-coming stars uh, in the AEW. So that's uh, Jungle Boy versus Darby Allin. I got that at number three. At number four, I'm going to go with Hakara Shida. Hakara Shida taking on Tay Conti. Uh, from April 21st, you know, Tay Conti was the uh, number one contenders. But yeah, another solid match from Hakara Shida. I, I would say this is arguably the best match she's had on Dynamite so far. I would say her best pay-per-view match was uh, the last one against the, uh, uh, the, the, the Japanese girl. Her name's not coming to me right now. But yeah, Hakara Shida, Tay Conti, just nice back and forth match. Um, you know, very stiff, very, uh, you know, just, just good chemistry between these two. Very hard hitting. Uh, I thought Ty Connie looked exceptional here. Uh, very underrated match, I would definitely say that. So that's Hakurashita, Ty Conti. Definitely looks like Hakurashita is going to have to finally deal with Dr. Britt Baker uh, in the coming weeks. But we'll see how that goes right there. So Hakurashita, still the AEW Women's Champion. Uh, we're approaching a whole year. I think a double or nothing, it'll be a whole year. So... We'll see what happens at the pay-per-view at the end of the month. And then at number five. Yeah, number five is a tough one. I was kind of fighting between two different matches. But I'm going to, I'm just going to be, you know, Darby's kind of dominated this list. So, But if you haven't seen the match with J.D. Drake and Darby, uh, check it out too. That came really close to making the list. But I want to go with someone different here. So we'll go with Trent. Trent with the question mark taking on Penta El Zero Meta from uh, April 21st. You know, really not much to say about it. I just thought the match was refreshing. It, it, it was Trent's first singles match back in quite some time. I thought Penta had a couple of, uh, you know, solid one-on-one -on -one matches this month. Uh, so, yeah, Trent versus Penta El Zero Meta from April 21st. Uh, really, really solid match to, uh, uh, you know, I think it was like the second, second match on that Dynamite from April 21st. All right, so let's move on. Um, really, it's in terms of promos go. Uh, I thought the Young Bucks cut a great promo uh, during the he their heel turn. Basically, the Bucks, you know, they had a uh, six-man tag where they actually turned on John Moxley. You know, Matt Jackson just couldn't suck it up and uh, super kick Kenny Omega. So all the stuff that Don Callis was trying to brainwash the Bucks about about how you know they haven't been the same since they left Japan. It's it finally you know they finally decided to change and uh, have joined the elite and uh, Don Callis and Kenny Omega. So Young Bucks changed their ring attire. So they cut a really good promo before their match with uh, uh, Pac and uh, Ray Phoenix. So that was more of a video package promo. But uh, but without a doubt, the best promo of the month. There's two, actually. You know, you could definitely argue that Jericho cut his two best promos in AEW this month. The uh, the Inner Circle promo on MJF, where he's just kind of burying the Inner Circle. He's basically calling uh, MJF my jerk-off friend. Uh, calls out MJF for saying that Tully Blanchard is the best brain in the business. Basically said that he was the third wheel in the Four Horsemen. He couldn't really hold Ric Flair's jockstrap, you know, basically, you know, really kind of buried uh, Tully Blanchard. Um, he, he basically said what I always said about the uh, the the FTR. Yeah, you can't tell one from the other. But uh, and the Sean Spears thing, talk about how Sean Spears, you know, hasn't been relevant in 10 years or since, you know, he was kind of jerking the curtain at the other company, kind of burying what he did in NXT, kind of burying what Sean Spears has done so far, like a big pile of nothing in AEW. So I thought it was great. And JR even said, what an immortal promo uh, by Jericho. See, Jericho, it's, 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 it's a tough call. But I would definitely say when, when you look at Jericho, especially the work in AEW, too, and especially his 2001 stuff, like I would definitely prefer babyface Jericho over heel Jericho. It's the one rare case where I would prefer the guy a as a babyface. And I know some people have said that a lot of a lot of people do say that because of, you know, they didn't like the undisputed champion character or whatever. But I would definitely say I prefer Jericho 2003 heel over 2004 babyface. I think everybody would be in agreement on that. But that might have that might have more to do with Jericho's personal you know situation at the time. But yeah, Jericho was a monster on the mic. He out promoted MJF, in my opinion, this whole month. Uh, the parlay between the Inner Circle and Pinnacle once again. Jericho steals the show. Sammy cut a good promo. Even uh, uh, Dax Hardwood and the FTR cut good promos there. Sean Spears actually stepped up to the plate, and I thought he cut the best promo he's cut so far in AEW. But it was totally overshadowed by uh, Jericho's promo here. 
on uh, MJF talked about how, you know, you know, at 25 years old, jerking the curtain in WCW, but it was jerking the curtain in WCW that made me what I am. And talked about, you know, all the experiences from Germany to J Japan and everything that Jericho did at 25 compared to MJF at 25. You still give the edge to Jericho, even though MJF trying to brainwash everybody and act like he's above Jericho at 25, which Jericho kind of brought to light that that's really not true. So I thought it was an awesome promo and give MJF credit too. you know, he, he, he did cut some great promos the, the sit sit down with Jim Ross. He really came off like a prick and Jim Ross is funny there. But uh, but yeah, man, definitely the Jericho inner circle stuff. They're they're building up to the blood and guts match, which I guess they can't uh, call it war games. But I'm assuming it's going to be a war games match just based on the uh, the uh the graphics so uh that's going to be a blood and guts i'll cover that at the end of may before we get the double or nothing uh uh t to the double or nothing pay-per-view which is actually on may 31st but but yeah man i think everything's up in the air you, you got to really get through blood and guts to see you know how this uh next pay-per-view is going to play out i thought christian was going to get the uh, championship match against omega now i'm not so sure i would actually say this I i'd rather see you know get this blood and guts thing out of the way then I'd like to see Jericho Omega again on pay-per-view. You know, a lot of people weren't, weren't really watching AEW uh, the last time they had a uh, pay-per-view main event. But yeah, I think I think you need to do it now, especially while Jericho, you know, before he gets any older than he already is. I think Jericho's hot right now. So I think Jericho versus Omega would be a great main event. But I was thinking maybe Christian was going to get the shot. You know, you could always do a Moxley match again. But, you know, you've seen Moxley Omega so many times at this point but uh seems like christian's doing a lot of stuff with taz uh i thought he had a good match with uh with hobbs not a bad match at all i thought i thought he made hobbs look like a beast uh the segment you know uh the week before they actually had the actual match so yeah christian's been doing some good promos with taz i like what taz is doing right now it's not a, it's not a bad dynamic uh, the Christian and Team Taz uh, uh, situation. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't seen Young Bucks versus Pac and Ray Phoenix, uh, definitely check it out. Whatever I said about it doesn't do it justice. I think it was one of the best Dynamite matches uh, that they've had so far. So so definitely check it out. Young Bucks are heels now. So uh, definitely like their change of uh, direction. And I'm out. All right.